and welcome to my channel Haley Marie Vintage. Today I'm very excited. It is time for I feel like what has become my annual swimsuit sewing make. I love making swimsuits. I love the swimsuits I make more than anything I could buy in the stores. So that is what we are doing today and today to mix it up a little we're doing a swim cover as well. So this is our pattern. I'm gonna put it here. It's another Lady Marlowe pattern from the 30s. I had you guys vote on this in the 30s one which was perfect because this is kind of what I wanted to do anyway. I think it's going to be super, super, super cute. So that is what I'm going to be working on. I'm going to do the swimsuit and the cover up. However, because we are in the modern day where there is more than cotton swimsuit fabric, I'll be using this beautiful lycra fabric, which is like stretchy and normal swimsuit material. I will also throw in a lining. I need to decide what color of lining I want to do, like if I want a nude or a white. I'm not too worried about this being sheer, so it's really more of a comfort thing. So that is what I'm making the swimsuit out of and then the cover-up is this beautiful kind of terry cloth fabric that I found on Etsy. I'm really excited about this. I don't have a good swimsuit cover right now. The swimsuit cover that I use, I like thrifted for like five dollars on a last minute thing because I remembered that I forgot a swimsuit cover up for my trip to Italy. This will be excited to have an official one and especially one that kind of like peeps out like this and is just super cute. I'm really excited. I'll use this with like all my swimsuits, not just this one, but I do really love the fabric combination of these. Some people were definitely concerned about print on print. I love print on print. I will wear print on print. This will be super useful for me. And also like for me, a swimsuit cover up's a very practical thing. It's like, you just want a little coverage while you walk to the pool or the beach or wherever you are, or you're driving. So I'm gonna wear this with all types of swimsuits regardless of the pattern. So I may as well make something out of one of my favorite patterns. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to tackle this piece by piece. So let's go ahead and hop into it. So here I am cutting out my swimsuit fabric. This is a directional print, so I'm making sure everything is in the correct direction. It would have been, I guess, nice to match prints here, but I didn't. The one thing I do want to know is I have less of this fabric than I originally thought I did, so I am actually going to switch instead of using the 1930s short bottoms because I don't have enough fabric for that. I am going to use this Friday swim bottoms pattern. I'll link it down below. It's a great swim bottoms pattern. This is my tried and true. This is my third time using it. It is unfortunate I can't do the shorts, but sometimes you miscalculate your fabric and it is what it is. So I will be doing the 1930s top with a modern bottom. So I will just be cutting that out. This fabric was definitely more prone to rolling than other lycras I've worked with, but it still turned out pretty well. And I'm just going to, again, lay my pieces out very deliberately and then of course cut them and then I will work on some other fabrics. And then here I am cutting out the skirt for the dress. So because these are stripes, I am really, really carefully laying out my fabric so the stripes align all the way down the cut. Yes, I know that the best way to do this is to really cut every piece separately, but I hate cutting fabric so it's not going to happen. And this got me close enough. I am also cutting these with an extra seam because I know I want to do a French seam on this since it's a swimsuit cover up. For me, it will probably get washed quite a bit. So I wanted to make sure to have it prepped to do that with French seams. While I cut out this fabric, this is a reminder that I have a Kofi where you can go over and buy me a coffee. I put a lot of time and work into this channel. The link is down in the description. The belt for this, I am going to have being a horizontal stripe across my body. The rest of the stripes will be fairly vertical. And all of these, I'm just really carefully looking at all my notches and making sure everything matches each other because this belt is six pieces and I wanted to make sure that those six pieces all match. My last thing to cut out was the bodice and since the bodice is a mirrored shape on the back, I can't exactly get the stripes to match because they are not a repetitive mirroring pattern. So I had to compromise a little bit here, but I think they turned out okay. And with that, we're all finished cutting. I'm very excited. I am going to cut some interfacing for the collar off camera, but other than that, we're good to go. So here I am working my darts. I love working with swimsuit material because I know it will all eventually go in the water. So water soluble pen is the way to go. Here I'm just following the lines. Darts and swimsuits is definitely kind of an odd thing and doing them in swimsuit materials is also strange, but I've definitely found one of the reasons I love swimsuits that I make myself so much is because they have a dart. So they actually give me shape and support instead of just like squishing everything down. And then here I'm actually sewing the dart. So for this dart, 
I am using a straight stitch. This is the only place on the stretchy material I will be using a straight stitch. And this is just because I need my darts to not stretch or do anything weird. And then I am ironing these seams. I know it seems strange to iron a swimsuit, but I do feel like it does help it come better at the end. Of course, make sure you're using really, really light heat settings so you don't melt your fabric. And then I am pinning that middle seam together. What you also see me doing here is I am seeing which are my favorite of each piece because that will then be the outside piece versus the inside piece. All of these will eventually be sewn together into one piece with the inside and the outside. And I just wanna make sure the outside pieces are my favorite part of the fabric, which are the flamingos. And I really like the drinks with a lemon slice in them. So I am just trying to place my patterns a little bit intentionally. But yes, I am going ahead and figuring out what works best before pinning them all together. All of these pretty much get pinned together and then you turn them inside out to have them all work. So here I am assembling the four pieces that make up the bodice on both the inside and the outside and then I am also doing the straps which are just an up and down thing. But yeah, as you can see again, this fabric is curling a lot. This is the first lycra I've worked with that curls like this and it's very annoying. And then here I am also going ahead and sewing the bottom pieces together like my swimsuit bottoms so I have the lining and the outside fabric. So these I am sewing together just the bottom front to the bottom back, super easy, nothing crazy. And then I am sewing these with the zigzag stitch so that they, they stretch even though it is up and down and I shouldn't need too much stretch there. It's always better to have it stretched than not because otherwise it might have thread breaking and you don't want the whole thing falling apart on you while you wear it and are swimming inactive. So that is why I'm using a zigzag stitch on all these seams. And then I will trim down these seam allowances quite a bit. And back to working on the top here, I am again pressing those seams, even though it seems counterintuitive with this, before then sandwiching these together. I am leaving three holes here, one at the bottom and then two at the tips where the straps go. This is what the instructions say to do. It does feel kind of weird, but I trust the instructions, so I will follow them. And then I am again zigzagging all the way around except for those points I previously mentioned. And then to go ahead and turn this out, I'm first clipping all the corners because this would get really bulky really fast. This is pretty thick fabric. So I am trying to trim my seam allowances down as well as make sure all of those corners will not be bulky before then turning it all the way inside out. I am going to also do that with the straps, of course. This one, it's more clipping curves than so many corners, but still very, very important. And then here I am working on the bottoms again. I am basting the lining to the outside. These will all be stitches that will be pulled out because of course they don't stretch, but they're needed before I can then put in the elastic and the waistband. And now I'm just gonna focus on the bottom until I can get my twin needle. I'm trying to get as far into the steps as possible before making my run to Joanne. So here I am measuring out the elastic according to the guides in the pattern. Usually I kind of do my elastic by how I feel about it. I don't usually feel like I have a precise way I do it, but in this case they give very clear instructions, so I went ahead and I followed those when cutting out my elastic. And then here I am stitching that elastic together so that way it is all done and ready to go. And here I am zigzagging on the waistband. This I am doing on the inside because I will eventually top stitch on the outside. So this is just my initial stitching to get the waistband starting to go in place. And then here I am stitching in the elastic, just stretching things along to make sure that the elastic goes in even. I am using the rule of four here, which is where you fold both pieces into quarters, pin your elastic accordingly, and then stretch your elastic to fit each quarter so that way everything will be even. So you'll see basically four pins here. And here I am pulling out all of my basting stitches because now everything is stitched together and I don't need them anymore and I wanna make sure not to forget to take them out. I have forgotten to take them out before on a pair of swimsuits like this and the second I put it on, I just heard all these threads snap and it was not a great hearing or feeling. So definitely pull out that basting stitch. And I finally got the twin needle at Joann's. Wow, these are expensive. They're like $8 a needle, which is wild. But basically the reason I want twin needles is it has a nice top stitch on the top where 
where it's two parallel lines but on the bottom it's a zigzag that allows your fabric to still stretch so you kind of get the best of both worlds of both a zigzag stitch and a straight stitch so i'm really excited to use this for the first time ever although i am very nervous and real quick we're gonna pause here so you can hear what it sounds like when i break my needle in this because learning curve nothing like breaking an eight dollar needle Once I recover my twin needle out of the fabric, which was also a bit of a journey, I will then replace it with a different twin needle. I did pick up two, thank God I didn't have to go back to Toy Ann's. So we are gonna continue to move along through this project. Now that I have sewn down the leg holes with the twin needle, I am then just trimming off the edge of this. Knits are so interesting in that you don't like necessarily have to finish the seams as well. Like in this case, I can just cut down to the edge and it's not gonna fray or do anything weird. And then I don't need the bulk of like having basically a double term seam with a bit of elastic in it. This is just something that took me a while to like learn is actually true. I almost didn't believe it, but I started to look at some of my knit pre-made clothing and saw that they did their hems this way, which will always be wild to me, but that's okay because it does work and that is what matters. So I am trimming off all my extra seam from folding over and then top stitching the leg holes. And now it is time to top stitch around my swimsuit top. Here we're doing the same thing where I'm keeping one of them pretty close to the edge and then the other obviously of the needles just goes down. What broke my needle earlier is that I didn't have my bobbins up at the top set correctly. So the thread had wound around a piece until it snapped. That was very fixable. It was not my machine's fault. It was definitely a user error. So I was able to just move right along and get it done. And then I am pinning in the straps. And then the way these work is you fold over the edges and then you'll top stitch them down and it'll sandwich the strap in between. I was very skeptical of this, but I was able to catch the back of the strap in most of these. I do have one corner I have to hand sew, but I'm pretty pleased because it's just one corner. And usually when I done like sandwich stitching like this, it has not worked out. And here's where I'm actually stitching that. My curls seem to be what the camera wants to focus on, but I am about to go over that super thick strap area where we have almost six layers of fabric and my machine handled it like a pro, even if my alignment was not pro. Next up are the pleated bits in the front. They actually have these pleats sit on the outside, which I think looks better with not a modern fabric swimsuit. Like I can see how this really worked well with cotton, but I went ahead and I followed the instructions, pinning these and then sewing a quarter inch from the edge. And then once I had these stitched in, I then went over and st top stitched them where you would normally press them with an iron. And iron, of course, is not going to keep these pleats in check. So I went ahead and I used stitching to keep it in check. You'll see this in the front in the reveal. It's maybe not the prettiest, but it works. But with that, we finished the swimsuit and we will jump to the check-in tomorrow before starting on the cover-up. All right, good morning. It is almost 11.30. I've been to the farmer's market. It was Pride weekend at the farmer's market, which is always fun. Lots of, I don't know, fun costumes and things. Got flowers, the usual, um, but today we're now getting ready to start sewing. Um, so yesterday I wrapped up this, which is my swimsuit top and bottom. They're really cute, I've tried them on. I mean, I've used this pattern a ton, this uh, bottoms pattern. So I knew these would fit. This is definitely like my best finish to date of these. They look really, really nice. I like the twin needle. And then this guy here is really cute. It's pretty high coverage in the future. I think I'll probably sew these down by three inches, maybe even a half inch to get just a little bit more like squeeze here, but they're looking good. That only took me four hours yesterday, which is really nice. That is always been my favorite part about making swimsuits is you kind of can get to finished product pretty quickly. Today, I will be working on the cover up. I've read through the instructions and they actually were not what I was expecting. So I'm pretty excited to show you how these are put together because yeah, I haven't really seen uh, anything put together like this. And I think that's probably because this is 30s. Today, yeah, pretty much the only goal is to sew. I'm just gonna kind of 
minute sew, sit around the house, maybe take a walk. So yeah, let's go ahead and hop into the sewing. First, I am starting by fusing the interfacing to the fabric. The pattern didn't mention needing interfacing. I just know from experience this will go better if I have interfacing. So I have added interfacing up around the collar. And once that's done, I am pinning the tucks in this. And it's interesting, like the swimsuit, the tucks are on the outside, which is more normal for tucks than it is for like the way the tucks are on a swimsuit, but it's still interesting nonetheless. And they're done exactly the same way I did them in the swimsuit by pinning them and then sewing I think a quarter inch away from the edge. This dress does also have a couple darts so I am doing that next. Here I'm pinning the facings together which are just the front two facings and the back of the neck facing. And now we're moving up to seaming this up. I forgot to put the extra room for French seams on the side of the bodice, but I did remember on the top shoulders. Here I am sewing down the edge of the facing. So this I just fold it over a quarter inch and sew all the way down it. And it's already time to put the facing on to the collar, which is what I'm doing here, matching all my notches and all that fun stuff. And then here, after sewing it down, I am understitching. Again, you are not catching the correct thing. You're just getting a big old look at my shoulder and some really, really old sewing project details, which includes a very crooked bias binding. But I promise what I'm doing here is I am understitching. And then I clip all my corners and my seams and things, and then I'm going to press this all down. The understitching really, really helped this fabric press absolutely beautifully. It rolled over so nice, and you don't see any of the lining on on the other side, which would be very noticeable because while they're the same fabric, they're very different portions of the stripe. So I'm pretty excited how well this worked. I have also sewn the side seams together, which then gives me the shoulder opening, which is what I'm working on here. I guess shoulder opening is otherwise known as an armhole. Here they have you put in some bias tape to be your facing. I just have some plain cotton bias tape that I've had in my stash that I picked up at an estate sale, and I am stitching that in before then at the end, stitching them together the way the instructions said. This was kind of a different experience for me, but it all worked out. And once the bias tape is in, I know exactly where my armhole lands. So I am then able to put on my seam binding, which is how I'm finishing the seams that I forgot to cut for a French seam. I have also understitched the tape that is around the armholes, and then I am just pressing it to get that nice clean look before I go to hand sew a bunch of things down. For the hand sewing, I have a bunch to do, including stitching down the whole neckline facing, as well as stitching down the armhole facings. This is all done by hand via slip stitch, and I am just picking up the tiniest bit on the other side. I opted for white thread instead of the pink for this because I thought it would be less visible. The pink was just kind of like a fun inner detail for myself. With that all done, I am now doing all of my skirt seams. So these are all French seams, so I am sewing them wrong sides together and then here I have already pressed them and folded them and they are now ready to be sewn right sides together so that way they will open up and we'll have that a lovely enclosed French seam. And then I am ironing it open to see how well my stripe matching did. It did pretty well in some places but not in others. Stripe matching is always so tricky especially when it is not like a repeating stripe like this one but I did get the back seam to be really really nice and it's just the side seams that could use a little bit of work. Um, I don't know how these got so messed up but they did. I must not have been cutting them on the same angle. While the blues match the pinks and the blues and the oranges at the bottom definitely do not, but it is what it is and we're going to continue moving. With the belt, I can really focus on pinning the correct stripes together so everything matches really nicely and was able to achieve that. This is just easier because since it's such a small piece of fabric, you can really focus on that matching because you only have like an inch and a half to match instead of several. So I am matching all my stripes here and it is working and I am happy. Here I went ahead and I worked a bound buttonhole. I just need one buttonhole for this, so a bound buttonhole I thought would work nicely, especially considering, again, I want to be able to wash this a bunch. I did this the usual way, which I have shown in many other videos. I'll link one of those videos right here in the eye. But basically here I have pressed out everything I need to to have that the lips that open and eat the button on the other side, if that makes sense. And I am pinning these to put in the final stitches at the corners to finalize the 
bound buttonhole. And then here I am stitching that in. After that, the instruction said just to stitch the rounded curves at the end of each side of the belt. I was slightly perplexed by this because I didn't understand that the belt would actually be the connector. I had just kind of always assumed that the belt would be a separate piece. So this was actually really interesting. So here I have clipped my seams so that way the are poking out of the main belt part but otherwise I am clipping my curves and pressing this down so it's nice and neat. Technically they have you top stitch, but I didn't wanna break up the stripes because no matter what thread color I used, it would be visible on some of them. So I went ahead and I skipped the top stitching in favor of just a really nice press, which I was able to do successfully. And here is where the construction method gets really interesting. So what I am doing is I am matching the marks in the bodice to the belt, like corresponding belt marks. So the bodice will be sewn into the belt and then the other side will be folded over and hand stitched down and the skirt will eventually do the same thing. I just thought this was absolutely interesting and my focus here is on the bodice. Once that is in, I am giving it a good press before going and adding the, the skirt to where the skirt goes. This is just so cool and I can't wait to show you the final result because this was such an interesting way to construct and it should all click for you once you see this final. So here is where hopefully what I'm saying now all makes sense and gives you light bulb moment. So I have sewn the outside of the belt to the dress and now the inner portion of the belt, which again is like the only part that has the terry inside, that is now being pressed and pinned down to cover those seams. So the way the pattern actually has you do this is by top stitching. And so you kind of do this a little bit different, but I do not like a top stitch on a piece like this. I would really prefer to put in the time to hand stitch it to keep the look that I want, but I just think this is a really cool method. I also do love hand sewing. So this gave me an excuse to have a longer hand sew that was quite enjoyable and I really didn't mind at all. And then I am adding in the button as well as finishing up the button hole. This is just important because basically I couldn't try this on until we got to this step because the belt is such a key part of the process. Once I tried it on, I could then focus on having it hit me where I want hem right wise. So here I am first turning up the hem by a quarter inch and stitching around to give me a nice clean finish. And then I'm also gonna go through and I'm gonna put in basting stitches so that way I can hem this curved hem. So the way the basting stitches work is then you can pull them and you can distribute the like roundness that needs to be kind of like put into the hem to make it stay curved like this. And it gives it a way to distribute that roundness and so that way it's distributed even and you don't have those weird pleats and tucks you can sometimes get with a round hem. So once I've got these pulled and have them all adjusted, I then iron and pin them down. And then of course, once this is done, I get to hand stitch it all, which was so enjoyable. I was binge watching the sewing bee for this. So I absolutely had a blast hand sewing this. And then the last step for this for me is to put on the snaps as shown on the diagram. I did add one extra snap so that way the round belty part would stay down. And then we are all done and I'm ready to show you the reveal. I hope you enjoyed. Alrighty, you have seen the reveal. I hope you enjoyed my time on the very rocky beach, losing my balance a lot. We just kind of have rocky beaches here in Washington. That's the way it is. Yeah, it was uh, also low tide, so it was a very stinky beach. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the cost breakdown and wrap up of this video. Of course, as always, we'll start with the cost breakdown. Let me grab my spreadsheet. I have my spreadsheet at hand. So all things considered, I would consider this not that expensive. The fabric for both these 
swimsuit and the cover-up was $61.96. And then the notions were $9.79. The notions are like the buttons, the snaps, the thread. And I guess that's it in this case because they didn't actually need that many notions. But I did use a lot of thread in this project. Anytime you do zigzag stitching or stretch stitching, I feel like you go through thread like water. And then the patterns were $36.73. So the first pattern was the Lady Marlow pattern. And then the second pattern was the Friday pattern, which I'll link down below. Actually, I'll link both of those down below. The Lady Marlow pattern was $27.47 with tax and shipping and all that jazz. And then the Friday pattern I counted as $9.26 because this is its third use. So I took the price and I divided by three, getting you to that total of $36.73. That brings us to a grand supply total for $108.48. I'm more than happy with this cost. Like higher end beach wear is often like $120 for the whole swimsuit once you have tops and bottoms. And then swimsuit cover-up would then probably be like an additional hundred something dollars if it was of high quality, which both of these garments I would say are of high quality. As far as time goes, the cutting of the fabric took me two and a half hours. The swimsuit only took me four hours. It's why I like swimsuits. You can get through them pretty quick. And then the swimsuit cover-up was five hours and 15 minutes to make, which again, probably pretty fast because it doesn't have a ton of closures. Closures always slows you down. So that brings us to a total of 11 hours and 45 minutes, which considering I left with three garments feels not too shabby. I'm multiplying that by 32.70, which is the cost of living here in Seattle to be able to make a living wage that covers not just rent and food, but also gives you a little bit of financial wiggle room for savings and things like that, which in my opinion are needed to live. Paycheck to paycheck is not a living wage. So that brings our labor total to $384.23. This is our grand total at $492.71. This actually would not be atypical for like high-end swimsuit cover-up set or from maybe a slow fashion source where they actually pay their workers fairly. I always think it's really important to highlight how much clothing should cost if you are actually paying a living wage. So that is the total for this. For what I paid that $108.48, I am super happy with. I think even if you went to Target at this point because they charge separately for tops and bottoms, you would be at that $108 price range and what I have is much nicer. So plus the swimsuit cover up. So I'm gonna jump into showing you all the things. So first is the swimsuit. This is hands down the best pair of bottoms I have made with the Friday pattern. So I've tried this Friday pattern a few different ways. I think I like this one the best. I think I would maybe not zigzag vertically, which is what I did. The coverage here is really, really nice. I put the elastic in and the elastic didn't catch anywhere weird, which was a problem in my one that I made on this channel last year. But yeah, I think it looks really, really good. I think they, I mean, maybe they don't quite look like a pair of store-bought bottoms because of the elastic, but this means it stays up and stays exactly where I want it to be. As for the top, I'm pretty pleased with this as well. I did have to stitch, there's one little corner here that I did have to stitch down. I think in the future, I would not only make these pleats at the front a little bit deeper, you'll see in the reveal how it was kind of like up here and I would probably actually like it to hit about where this slip is hitting me. And I would kind of like to have the pleats on the inside of the lining and not have them be like as outside. I think that outside bit like works with a cotton top, but I'm not quite sure how much I love it with the spandexy swimsuit material. Otherwise, I really love this material overall. I think this pattern is so cute and so fun. I also might in the future, I really like swimsuit patterns, that button at the back. Um, those are not conventional for like modern day, but I really like not having the ties on my back because then it's less uncomfortable to like drive and stuff in them. I know the primary purpose of swimsuits is to swim, but I would like to not have a knot in my back when I'm driving. I have not yet gotten to swim in this suit, so I cannot tell you its functionality. I can bet it would stay on pretty well. The only thing maybe working against it, which you maybe noticed in the reveal, is like I was definitely having a little bit of an underboob moment. So I think if I was like coming down a water slide or jumping in a pool, it might pop up. But let's be honest, most bikinis nowadays do that anyway. So it's not like that's something unique to my creation. As for the swimsuit cover-up, I adore this cover-up. I'm thinking about how I can wear it in a not cover-up way. I think it would be super cute just the cover up and then a pair of shorts. Uh, so you would have kind of like that deep V like sensualness. I think that would be really fun. And I just think it's really stinking cute. And my stripe matching could have been better. Actually, they like overall look pretty good. The only one that bothers me is this blue one down here that like goes to nowhere. And I think we have a similar problem probably on the other side. If I cut these the way, yep, I thought I did. The back is beautiful. And I absolutely love the way this blue stripe goes into this blue V 
on the back. I think it's absolutely stunning. And yeah, I feel really cute in this cover up. I'm gonna use it a ton in the future. I already know it's gonna be my go-to cover up. I like that it gives peaks to the swimsuit, but also like has you covered enough for whatever public decency you feel like you need when you're going to be in a swimsuit, but are not in your swimsuit yet. I don't know, swimsuit cover ups are kind of a weird concept overall. And then I loved this way of doing the belt with it fully, I guess, like lined inside. I'm really glad I didn't top stitch it and I just went through and hand stitched it. I do really think that line of stitching would have been a bit of a bummer. So I'm happy I did that. And I think as far as construction of the sky, I would not change anything. I mean, I would maybe, you know, remember to French seam the side, but I used a rayon thing, so it worked fine. And again, I haven't gotten to wear this yet, but I'm sure it will pop in soon and I will have an occasion for it. I didn't really like give these a test drive, but these aren't a test drive that I can wear at work. So a lot of times if I can't wear it to the office, I can't really give you like a full day report back on fit and how comfortable stuff is. Let's see, new skills. Twin Needle. Twin Needle is now unlocked. It's now a skill in my repertoire and I'm pretty excited about it. It's going to be probably more useful for my mending projects than for my sewing projects. I don't tend to work with stretch. I don't really like how stretchy fabrics feel and they often contain plastic, which is something I try to avoid. So just for all those reasons, I don't anticipate me using that a ton. However, I order these undershirts from a brand called Numi. I can link them down below. I'm not sponsored, but I'm a very sweaty person and I love vintage clothing and handmade clothing and I like to not have to wash that clothing a whole lot so I wear these undershirts that have sweat guards and they're always way too long on me like they almost go down over my butt and so now I am able to hem those to exactly where I want them and I'm pretty pleased about that because a twin stitch is how I'm going to do that I could have just zigzagged it but I just felt like it was going to look really ugly so now I have that in my repertoire we're going to be in good shape and I do buy <laughs> way too many swimsuit fabrics. I think I have two or three more I still need to make from stuff in my stash. So I will also be using my twin needle on that. It definitely made for a much nicer finish and I'm a lot happier with the finish than when I was using a zigzag stitch. Learn to use a twin needle. It's not as scary as it looks. I didn't, well I was gonna say I didn't even read my machine instructions, but maybe don't listen to me on that because I did break a needle within like the first few minutes of sewing. But uh, don't be scared of your twin needles. It's worth a shot. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and say thank you so much for watching this video. As always, always I have a place on Kofi linked down below where you can buy me a coffee if you so desire. I put a lot of love and time into this channel. And then if you're new here, I would always love it if you would stick around. I post every single Friday at 8 a.m. Pacific time and it is a fun mix of vintage sewing and whatever content pops out of my brain. Sometimes it's travel, sometimes it's thrifting, sometimes it's other, I'm gonna say weird things, but all of them are pretty on brand I feel like. So yeah, I would love to have you there. And other than that, of course, it is always free to support me by commenting down below as well as giving this video a thumbs up. I hope to see you all next time. Bye!